Ladies and gentlemen, Caleb Killian makes his MLB debut tonight for the Cubs. Let's get to it. Cubs looking for the sweep in the doubleheader against the Cardinals. Wrigleyville South Podcast coming right back at you. Stay tuned. Cubs fans, the future is bright. You, you're seeing the, the farm system start to bubble up to the top, up to the surface. Um, we've got some some studs on the way. You know, we started off this season, uh, even in the preseason, uh, during, the, uh, during the lockout, we were dealing with, you know, coming off of a quick, uh, a quick turnaround, quick spring training, and a big signing, say a Suzuki. Still have high hopes for Seiya Suzuki um, in his Cubs career, and and really liked the Marcus Stroman signing as well. But man, the guys who have stolen the show lately are the guys who no one really figured were going to play this big of a role this early. Um, as you have seen, some some big time performances and contributions from some young guys, some rookies, and some of the guys who were uh, maybe part of the puzzle for this year they weren't rookies necessarily but they were they have really stepped up keegan thompson justin Steele have really stepped up but earlier today we got to see an excellent performance um from one of these young guys um in in only his uh only his second start um you know the cubs cubs got just an amazing performance out of swarmer um and i mean it's just what can you say about the kid? He he had a no hitter, I think, going into the fourth or fifth inning. Um, so shout out to Matt Swarmer for for getting it done because that was a, that was a great performance today, taking game one of this doubleheader against the Cardinals, uh, game three or no game four, sorry game four of this series um, with the Cardinals, a uh, big five gamer. So um, after they dropped the uh, the doubleheader against the the Brewers. This was a nice bounce back to get started off on the right foot. Ironically enough, a lot of people just assume that, you know, every doubleheader is pretty much going to be a split because um, it's 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 really tough to sweep a doubleheader. But actually the stats uh, point in the opposite direction. I don't have them right in front of me, but the, the stats actually point uh, very heavily toward uh, whoever won game one of a given uh, doubleheader typically wins game two matter of fact i'm gonna pull it up right now but first let's get into the man of the hour caleb killian um because he is gonna make his major league debut tonight here for the cubs at wrigley field and uh the whole world cubdom is uh is a buzz about it i've been talking about this for uh, a couple of weeks that this might be a possibility and then the buzz really started to pick up the last few days because you had this double header coming up and you knew you you have like the extra roster spot where you can bring someone up and and you 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 kind of give yourself that little that that bit of freedom um with a double header day to be able to have a, a a rookie for making his major league debut and in this case with Caleb Killian it makes all the sense in the world uh coming into this season he was the number 14 overall 
uh, prospect in the Cubs system. He was part of that blockbuster trade at the deadline last year with, uh, I guess it wouldn't be a blockbuster trade, but anyway, it was a, it was a big departure for the Cubs, letting Chris Bryant go to the Giants for Alexander Canario and Caleb Killian. But both of those guys are really putting it together, and it's been uh, it's been really fun to watch. Um, really fun to watch the way that they have put it together this season in particular, um, both in spring training and also, of course, like as they have torn it up uh, at Double A and Triple A. Uh, Killian doing his damage at AAA this year. Nine starts, 39 innings. He is 2-0 with a 206 ERA. And listen to this. Listen to these uh, advanced metrics. 0.23 home runs per nine. 3.4 walks. Not outstanding on the, you know, with his uh, his control and command. Um, but when you look at 9.38 strikeouts per nine that more than makes up for that uh that walk rate and when you aren't letting uh hitters get the ball out of the ballpark that helps even more and that's with a batting average of balls in play of 318 which is is not anything you know this is not uh where he's putting up these numbers because he's got a a crazy high luck rate where his batting average of balls in play is uh is in the 200s or something like that so Doing a really good job, and he makes his major league debut tonight. I'm really excited to see what he can do uh, against against the Cardinals. But look, we can't talk about the youth and the up and comers in this Cubs lineup um, if we don't talk about Christopher Morel because this guy has just been on fire. Um, he's just he he's really been putting it together. Had another great game today. Um, let's see what did it what let me see what his numbers were. I'm gonna have to pull up pull up the box score from uh from that game earlier. <coughs> Excuse me, earlier today. <coughs> Pardon me. Um wait, this is why is it showing this is crazy. So it is oh uh, okay, so it's not gonna let me. I'm gonna have to pull it up somewhere else. I was looking at the uh that's unfortunate. I was looking for the for the box score of the earlier game, and I was looking at it in the um, in the wrong spot because it's uh, it's showing me a replay of the game, and it's starting as though nothing has happened yet. So anyway, uh, let's see. Christopher Morel in the game earlier today. I apologize; it's taking me a minute to get here. Three for five with a double. I think he had a stolen base too, didn't he? Maybe not. He just had he just had a good base running day. He made a couple of uh, plays where he stretched um, and and gained an extra base, tagged up on a play. Um, that double was was a it would have been a questionable double for a lot of people with not as uh, fleet feet as he has. But uh, here's Christopher Morrell just getting it done. So yeah, so the future. I think the future looks really bright because we haven't even seen. There's there are some there's some guys who are much more highly rated on this roster. Who we haven't even gotten to see yet. We're, we're watching them down in the minor league level um, get things done. But you know, Brennan Davis, uh, of course, Kevin Alcantara has been getting it done. Um, Pete Crow Armstrong tearing it up. He I think he just got a promotion to high a uh, he's really young he's probably a couple of years away but still we're, we're we're looking at what could be a very promising future and that promising future takes another step forward today where you had uh matt swarmer do what he did in the first game um of this doubleheader with well, let's see what did he do he had uh six innings two hits he gave up the one solo shot uh two walks and five strikeouts but he had a he. I, I want to say he had a no hitter into the fifth. Um, that's what we've got going here. That that kid's pitching his ass off. Um, and you know, here we come tonight. It's Caleb Killian's opportunity to to shine. He's been tearing it up at Double A. Um, the Cubs ended Paul Goldschmidt's hit streak. That's always great. It's always great to beat the Cardinals and rub it in their noses. And it's always great to um, to end a hit streak. You don't want to be part of that. 
You don't want to be the team that, you know, you don't want them to get five consecutive hits um, or five, uh, five, five of those games in that streak um, right in the middle of, of your uh, run against the team. But yeah, so that's, uh, that's what we're dealing with here. I'm excited to see what, uh, what Caleb Killian is going to be able to do. And uh, I'm, I'm interested to hear what, uh, what you guys think. So hop on in the chat and uh, let us know. I'm going to post this uh, episode out again. Um, Cubs looking for the series victory tonight. Um, guarantee series victory if you if you pick up the win tonight. But we're not going to settle for just that. We're going for the for the uh, the four one setup by uh, by winning this one and then winning again tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so so tonight the Caleb Killian show makes its way to Wrigley Field, and I don't know. I'm just I'm super pumped about it because. This is uh, this is where this is where the fun starts, right? This is where the fun starts. <clears throat> Hang on, just a second. Let me uh, put this in here. Oh, come on! It's hard to type over here, <laughs> off to the side like this, but I'm getting it done. Um, but yeah, so. So what do you guys think? What do you what do you think about uh, Caleb Killian coming into the the fold as as a Cub? Big kid, six four, uh, you know, right around two hundred pounds. Um, big overhand curveball, <coughs> nice fastball. Um, you know, hitting you know mid to high nineties. So um, always going to be always going to be good stuff there. Um, it's. Uh, Sets up to be a very interesting matchup because it's a it's a Cardinals lineup that actually has quite a bit offers quite a bit of a challenge for uh, opposing pitching. Let's uh, share this one more time and then we'll get right back into it. Um, but this has been so I want to get into a, a bigger issue um, that this this kind of lends itself to. You know, you go back and you look at the last. I don't know, 10 or 12 years of Cubs baseball. And the uh, the big difficulty that, that the Cubs have had has been, hang on, is this a Fox? Oh, this is a Fox uh, broadcast. Okay. Let's go. Maybe I can listen to the score. I'll, I'll just listen to the, uh, I got it playing. I got the audio playing in my ear here. <clears throat> but yeah, so here's Killian coming to the plate, a 1.27 whip and a 206 ERA, um, 46 strikeouts and 39 innings, just really, really good all the way around, getting it done. And um, what I was getting at is if you look at the last 10, 12 years, maybe even longer, one of the things the Cubs have really struggled with, really, if you think about it, going all the way back to like Carlos Zambrano, Mark Pryor, Kerry Wood. They had a little stable right there where those were all homegrown guys who were elite arms at the time it, when they were in their the prime of their younger years of their careers. Um, the Cubs have really, really struggled since then. Developing arms, finding talent, in, you know, from the arm side. Like the, you go back and look at those drafts, they're drafting Javi Baez, Albert Almora, Wilson Contreras. Uh, Chris Bryant, Ian Happ, Kyle Schwarber. It was all these college bats or like high level high school bats, but really a lot of college bats and some of the guys um, from, oh, he said, he said Nolan Gorman's going to take a deep. Okay. Wolfgang is officially here. So we officially have beef. Um, welcome back, Mr. Mozart. Uh, I appreciate you uh, hopping in again and, and joining the chat and, uh, Pretending like uh, Nolan Gorman's going to take Caleb Kill me, take Caleb Killian deep. Um, Tommy Edmond is uh, is at the plate here to start things off, but uh, but yeah, I'm I'm glad to have you here because this is what it's all about. Like if Cubs and Cardinals fans can't uh, just talk shit to each other uh, while these games are going on, all in good fun, um, it's all love. Like it's uh, we're uh, we, we'll battle it out between the lines, but uh, then we'll just. I don't know, go get a beer after. Um, but uh, yeah, so Tommy Edmund just 
struck out on a 96 mile an hour fastball. So that's one for you, Mr. Mozart. Take that strikeout number one in the books, put that ball in the dugout, wrap it in plastic. You know, you know what they're going to do. They're going to take his first strikeout and they're going to misspell his name on a fake ball. They're going to get a different ball. They're going to, they're going to misspell his name and uh, write the wrong date or something on it. Uh, have some smudges uh, on the, uh, with the Sharpie. Um, Cause that's what you do to a rookie. It's one of the hazing uh, practices that goes on. So here's Nolan Gorman. All right. So here we go. It's money time. First pitch he swung right through. So let's see how this uh, how this at bat goes down. Zero and one count on Nolan Gorman, who you said was going to take him deep. Zero and two as he uh, that 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 ninety seven mile an hour fastball tailed away like a changeup. That was insane. That little two seamer. Wow. Little two seam power sinker. Hmm. Little 96 up above up at the shoulders. See if you can get him to chase. Change his eye level a little bit. I like it. Um, I got I have an LSU baseball game up on this other screen here, too. So I'm kind of double, you know, paying attention to both of those. Oh, that was wicked. Nice little that he that's that that's that big power curveball. 80 mile an hour down in the dirt. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. A little overhand curveball, beautiful stuff. I love it. <clears throat> so Nolan Gorman, he's gonna have to do it in another at bat, Wolfgang. I'm just saying, you know, it's uh, he's gonna have to wait until like the third or fourth inning. And here's Goldschmidt up again. Yeah, you should put the over on the K's. Yeah, for sure. This kid's wicked, bro. I'm telling you, it's uh. This is a guy who Cubs fans know because we've been watching this kid uh, for you know, well ever since he he came over in that trade. He was one of the key pieces of that trade. There, there were two two big gets in that trade when they traded Chris Bryant to San Francisco. Alexander Canario, who's an outfielder, um, who's a highly rated prospect, and then Caleb Killian, who who rocketed like in the in the uh, off season from. Uh, he was like the Cubs' number 14 prospect last year. He's their number four prospect coming into this year. So um, really moved up the, the the boards in terms of like where, you know, the consensus ratings are for him um, within the Cubs system. So here's – wow, just shattered Paul Goldschmidt's bat. Andleton Simmons is a vacuum cleaner at short. And so <laughs> strikeout, strikeout destroy Paul Goldschmidt's bat. That's a pretty good debut. All right. That's a pretty good first inning. Uh, you got to give it to the man. All right. And uh, I just love that you came in here so you could talk, sh talk shit to me as a Cardinals fan, because this actually livens up the show because now I get to hand it back to you because uh, that was a great start to what promises to be a very, uh, very productive career for one Caleb Killian. I'm excited about this. All right, I got to. Uh, I was going to pull something up. Can't remember what it was. Dang, I lost my train of thought. There was something I was going to pull up though, um, to see what. Oh, I know what it was. All right, let me. Yeah, let me check this real quick. Goofball. All right, not what I thought it was. And let me go back to. All right, yeah, so we're good. All right. Yeah, so there we are. It is uh, a very promising start to game two of this doubleheader where the Cubs are looking to sweep it and uh, take three of the first four of this five-game series. This, this is kind of a crazy year, the way that they did the schedule. I, it's going to be different next year because you're going to have uh, – have the restructuring of the of the schedule completed next year, but uh, I don't know. Shout out to the schedule maker because I know that was a difficult task. Um, but a five game series with a double header smack dab in the middle of it is just weird. It's just I'm just it's just weird to me. You play two, then you play two, and then you finish it off with one game tomorrow. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I know. It's uh, in. Uh, 
at Bush. But uh, but yeah, this is this is the this is the rivalry. I know there are there are other rivalries. You know, the Yankees Red Sox that's a big one. Um, you've you've got your Dodgers San Francisco. Um, there there are rivalries out there. Cubs Cardinals is is up there. Um, now we don't have what the Dodgers and Giants have, and what the Yankees and Red Sox have in that we've had some of these epic um, league championship series moments repeatedly or world series, not world series, but uh, you know, pennant race um, craziness uh, as routinely as, as a lot of those uh, those rivalries have had. But what we have had is a very healthy rivalry, regardless of how bad the Cubs have been for a long time and, uh, and how good look, I, I got I'm not a, an idiot, okay? I I recognize and respect what the Cardinals have done. It's a it's a very successful model franchise for um, for Major League Baseball. But I'm still a Cubs fan, and so to hell with the Cardinals, and let's uh, let's help them get wrecked. And oh, and by the way, let's let's remember that also while we're playing each other, the most important thing that happened today. Um, that that is not related specifically to this game or this doubleheader or this series in general is the Brewers lost to the Padres again. So that's a big bonus because that helps us both out because we can both agree on one thing at least, right? And that's fuck the Brewers um, because I don't have any love for the Brewers. <laughs> uh, never really cared about the Brewers, but uh, they have become quite the little pesky pain in the ass recently. So. Um, I'm not, I'm not here for it, but yeah, so that was, that was fun to watch. I actually got to watch the tail end of that game and Christopher Morrell. We talked about him when, uh, when I started off, um, tonight about all these young guys coming up and Christopher Morrell just continues to rake another knock. He's approaching a 300 batting average and he's, uh, his OPS is at 865 and I wouldn't be surprised if he takes off here. Um, Oh shoot! Maybe not because he's about to score on this double. <laughs> it's going all the way to the wall. Yeah, there's no way they're getting him. He's he's already he already touched home plate. It's over. Oh shoot! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! <clears throat> Willie just ripped that one. They had a, a play like this in the first game where. Uh, Nico Horner hit one that was like, it looked like it bounced over the bag and umpire called it foul. That would have driven in a run, but Horner ended up singling later, but it, not as uh, impactful as the double that drives a, a run home. Hmm. Mozart, let's talk about this. What in the hell is up with Nolan Arenado? Dude has made like four errors in this series. He's like supposed to be the best goal, the best uh, fielding third baseman in baseball. <laughs> And he's kicking the ball all over the infield, throwing the ball into the dugout, throwing the ball into the stands, into the net. What's up with your boy, Nolan Arenado? Yes, I said Arenado. That's correct. Um, Because that's what he has been uh, worthy of being called so far. Your boy, Palante, is not getting it done. Ian Happ's about to take him deep. Watch. You ready? Still don't have anybody out. And in other good news, LSU just took the lead. See, this is the Wrigleyville South podcast. So you have to recognize that I'm a Cubs fan who lives in Louisiana. I've lived here all my life. Um, and I'm also a big time LSU fan. So when they're playing in the uh it's, well, it's not the College World Series yet, but in the in the tournament that leads to the College World Series, uh, I'm gonna be watching that as well. And they already took a one nothing lead in the first inning. And Southern Miss, where they are playing, they're playing actually in Hattiesburg. And Southern Miss actually has like one of the best pitching staffs in college baseball this year. And uh, LSU has already jumped out to a 1-0 lead on them. So that's a good start. Similar to this game, where uh, where the Cubs have jumped out to a one-run lead. The crazy thing here is LSU is playing as the home team in this game. Uh, 
against Southern Miss, even though it is at Southern Miss's uh, stadium, because it's the it's that tournament ball where, like, weirdly enough, the the higher seed team is the home team in the first round, and then they have to be the road team in the, in the second round. It's weird. I don't understand why they do that. Yeah, to me, you should be the home team every game if you're hosting. It's just it's like just add it to the advantage that you get for a being a higher seeded team and b being uh, at your home stadium and hosting the site or hosting the regional. <clears throat> yeah, he does. I, I agree with you on that. He tries to do too much sometimes, or he tries to make the play look better than it needs to look. Um, but uh, but yeah, he's made some weird plays. He actually he had he made a play earlier today where he kept kicking it around and it was down the third baseline. He had to charge it. And Nick Madrigal actually ended up getting in a rundown because he kept hesitating because it looked like Arenado would have the ball and then he'd like drop it and then he'd start taking off and then he'd stop because it looked like he was getting it again. Anyways, it was just wild. But uh, now Frank Schwindel is up as uh, Ian Happ draws a walk and we are first and second, nobody out. Your boy Palante has thrown uh, 10 pitches to three batters, and he has not recorded an out yet. Oh, Schwindel just popped it up. Is that going to drop? Ooh, just foul. Wow. That was crazy. That would have been that would have been hilarious, actually. That's the kind of stuff the Cardinals usually do to us. The Cardinals usually like get some bloop nonsense that falls in and uh, they clear the bases or something. But yeah, it's uh so LSU has the bases loaded now with uh a two oh count. Two outs though. But a, a big slugger up Britton Joe Bear has eighteen home runs this year, nine sixty four OPS. And Frank Schwindel, speaking of high OPSs and big bombs, <clears throat> is at the plate for the Cubs. O and one count with nobody out. That's a rocket. Donovan catches it though. Wow, that was that was a rocket. He just there wasn't quite the launch angle on that one that he needed to get it out. But golly, he smoked that ball. I wonder what the exit velo on that one was. <clears throat> and Donovan tried to play that into like a a two run error. He looked like he was about to kick it across to uh, right field. Now Patrick Wisdom comes to the plate. Let's go. The way Andre Pallante has been uh, leaving pitches out over the middle of the plate, I uh, I almost expect Wisdom to go deep here. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go. This is gonna be a one true. I mean, a three true outcomes uh, at bat right here. It's gonna be walk, strikeout, or home run. I'm not putting any money on it, but uh, I'm just putting it out there that uh, I expect this to be. Wisdom's going to go deep. He's going to walk or he's going to strike out. And it, I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being like a 3-2 count before it's all over with. <clears throat> There's ball one, so... One and one. Trying to work him low and away, but not biting. <clears throat> Cubs have 48 first inning runs. That's crazy. We just need to score some runs in the second through ninth innings. Uh oh. Come on. Uh, that, was, that was not what I was expecting. <laughs> I'll take a big L there. Double play ball, and so the, the inning is over. Palante gets out of it. Um, didn't pitch well at all in that inning, to be perfectly honest. Uh, he pitched better than uh, Oviedo pitched earlier today. Gee whiz, that dude, what did he have? Like I saw at one point he had thrown, I think it was 37 pitches. 20 balls, 17 strikes. 
That's just awful. Not going to cut it. Give me uh, memories of Tyler Chatwood with the Cubs back in the day. What was that? Like two, three years ago? That was hard to watch, man. Tyler Chatwood had such amazing stuff. Like his, the ball moved all over the place. It was like he was throwing a wiffle ball. Problem is, he couldn't control it. And so he would, he would walk the bases. He was like Mitch Williams, walking the bases loaded left and right. It's not fun to watch. All right, so here we go. Caleb Killian is getting ready to hit the mound again. <clears throat> see how he goes through. I, what'll be really interesting is to see how he progresses as they communicate in the dugout and start, you know, going back and saying, hey, "All right, you know, look for this and look for this." Start to make some some adjustments here and there. Um, and then when you get to that second trip through the order, that's going to be really interesting to see, but I, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see how he goes through this, uh, Arenado Donovan and, uh, Harrison Bader stretch here. <laughs> uh, I mean, look, I, there's, there's, I think there's a guy like that in every system. Um, I get it like that, that, you guys hate him. I, I think there's always somebody like that in every system. Um, they keep getting called up no matter how bad they get their head kicked in. Um, it, it happens. But uh, it, it, I think it comes down to there's so much, so much of this stuff is so much more complex. Um, when you look at how the rules are for Major League Baseball, where like, you know, options and how many times you can, you know, who you can actually bring, you know, kind of taxi back and forth between triple A and, and the majors. Um, it's, it's not just as cut and dry as this guy sucks. Don't bring him up anymore. we got to bring other people up. And, and sometimes also when you have a spot that pops open where you need a, you need an arm. If one of your better arms just pitched last night, you can't call them up. You know, you've got to call who's available, who pitched four days ago, five days ago, and uh, and handle it that way. And then you also have to have all those other considerations. So it's just – it's complicated. And so that's why that kind of stuff typically ends up happening, I think, is uh, those guys are – I think they kind of take it as like, look, we're just going to count this game as a loss on, on a certain level. And we're going to hope that we can get whatever we can get out of him. And we're going to run him out there and see what happens. Um, it, it's, it's the it's the numbers game. It's part of the business of baseball. So two and one to Arenado. A little dribbler right in front of the mound. And he's done. So strikeout, strikeout. Goldschmidt destroys his bat and Arenado hits a dribbler 54 feet. Maybe not even that far. I don't know. It might have been 34 feet for all I know. It was, I think it might have been a little bit beyond halfway. I don't know. Maybe it was just a longer throw because it was on the third base side. <clears throat> all right. So here comes Brandon Donovan. Fastball right down the middle. Took it. Oh, that's not good. LSU just gave up a two-run homer. That's not pleasant. Of course, last night, <laughs> they took an early lead, <laughs> then went down 11-4 to four and scored 10 runs in the bottom of the eighth inning to win 14-11. to 11. It's the most insane thing I've ever seen. They just never stopped scoring. And there's a pop-up. So two down. Caleb Killian getting it done. I like actually th that what I've seen with this, just that like these last three at bats have not been strikeouts. I know that sounds weird. Like maybe it sounds weird um, to some people, you know, strikeouts are uh, more impressive to, to most people. But when I watch a, a young kid like this, who has that strikeout arm and has all that stuff, the fact that he's not overusing his toolkit 
you ever seen when somebody makes a PowerPoint presentation and they use every random transition in the uh, in the PowerPoint uh, library? <laughs> That's sometimes what some of these young pitchers do. They, they try to do everything. They try to do too much. And they try to strike everybody out. And yeah, it can look impressive, but it can also, um, first of all, the, the biggest thing is it, it burns through your pitch count and you, you're going to get yanked in the fourth inning if you're lucky. Um, and there's a ground ball. Come on, Wisdom. Get it across. Bader's got some wheels, man. So I've been watching Harrison Bader since he was in college playing against LSU. So um, I know that kid's got wheels. Three up, three down again. And uh, Caleb Killian getting it done. Getting it done. He, I think, what is he throwing? 20 pitches? 20 pitches, 14 strikes. 20 pitches through two innings. That is more impressive than uh, than the, the strikeouts that started it. Those are good. I, I, I loved watching the way that he worked through those at-bats and, and worked towards and got those strikeouts. But uh, more impressive to me is the last four outs that have been very efficient and very weak, very weak contact and they're hitting his pitch. That's that's what I like to see is I'm going to throw my pitch where I want to throw it, and it's going to be in the zone, and you're going to have to swing, and you're going to hit it where you don't want to hit it. And then we're going to field it. We're going to throw you out, and you're done. That's, that's good pitching. Now, the fact that he has in his arsenal the ability to gas you if he needs to or the ability to, to pull the string on you with that big overhand curveball, I like that too. Yeah, no, stop right now. I'm sorry. Don't, don't. <laughs> I made the mistake of, uh, yeah. So, yeah, he did. Uh, Swarmer did have a no hitter through, he didn't have a perfect game, but he had a no hitter through four today. And I, I jokingly said, hey, you know, no hitter through four. Cause I always think it's funny when people are like, he's got a no hitter through three. I'm like, relax. If you've watched enough baseball, you know that you don't even say the word no hitter until like the sixth or seventh. Of course, today in 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 2022 baseball, you damn near have to say it after the second um, because that pitcher might not be in there by the fourth um, because they're going to move over and, uh, and and go to the bullpen um, in a no hitter. You're going to have seven pitchers throw a no hitter, and to me, it's just kind of stupid because it almost doesn't count. But um, but yeah, that's um, that's the I guess the trap, right? Is is to start thinking about this stuff too. Much. I, I don't think he's thinking like that, and uh, I know our thinking about it doesn't really affect it. It makes us feel like it affects it because the odds are heavily against a no hitter being thrown. So everyone who says something thinks they jinxed it, but the reality of the matter is the odds are the problem. <laughs> the odds are infinitesimal that you will actually throw a no hitter. So when someone has a no hitter through two innings, saying he has a no hitter through two innings, isn't what makes the no hitter go away. It's the fact that it's damn near impossible to throw a no hitter that makes it go away. So um, yeah, it's definitely too early, but I mean, you can start talking about it if you want. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just not that uh, naive as to think that that's a possibility. Uh, I'll tell you what, maybe, maybe I'll stay in here until uh, the Cardinals get a hit. How's that? If I get to uh, witness a, a no hitter by uh, by committing to broadcasting the entire game while it's happening, then so be it. That's what we're going to do. So let's do it. Let's call it right now. I will stay on the air until the Cardinals record a hit. Well, until the Cardinals record a hit or this game ends, I'm not staying on the air until tomorrow. Uh, that's ridiculous. I hope you knew what I meant. And in the other game that I'm watching, uh, LSU is down 2-1. Southern Miss hit a two-out, two-run homer. In the uh, top of the second. So. PJ Higgins up. Then Hayward and then Simmons. Oof, man. So it's PJ Higgins and then uh, 
a couple of ground balls on the infield, most likely. Oh no! I, so I guess I should say until they get a base runner, I, we could say we could say that we're watching for a perfect game, uh, or you can. Um, I'm I'm actually just I'll stay on until they get a hit because uh, a perfect game. I'm not going to just be like, oh, he walked somebody. No, if he's still no hitting them, I'm going to stay. So it's possible. I mean, he's this kid's got good stuff. Nobody's seen him yet. Um. There's a, there's an outside possibility. It's it's worth talking about a little bit, but um, I still think it's kind of silly because when you get to uh, you get to the second trip through the order, third trip through the order, it's not going to be the same. Like it, this is they're really like sight unseen. They're just like who is this guy? You know. So. And one good thing in this LSU game is they've got this. This Joker throwing, he's thrown 35 pitches and he hasn't even gotten an out in the second inning yet. 36 now. And he's at another full count. Let's go, Jay Hay. Is that a bomb? Yes, sir. Let's go. All right. I see you, McManus. Let's go. <clears throat> so LSU just tied it up for the home run. <laughs> that, was, that was close to it. it. Hit like the top of the wall and bounced over. The guy almost caught it. Center fielder. All right. So here's Jason Hayward. A one and one count. Two outs here in the uh, bottom of the second. And Andre Palante throws a little fastball, and Hayward pops it up, and Donovan's right there. So, yeah, that was, that was a good good inning from Palante. Ten pitches, not bad. He's only throwing 25 through uh, – wait, is that right? Yeah, he's only – so he, a 15-pitch first. It seemed like he threw more pitches than that in the first. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. But, yeah, a little 10-pitch uh, three up, three down. That's That's a good – Good start for, uh, or a good recovery, good bounce back from, uh, you know, how poorly I think he pitched in the, uh, in the first, first inning. I don't think it was worth the money. Um, oh God. Yeah. That, like there was fan criticism of him the entire season that they won the world series. People hated him. <laughs> it was like, I had, it was 2016, all right? Like, we're in the middle of the season. We're, it's August. My brother calls him a uh, double play word, which is funny, but also, like, I was, I was like, that's mad disrespectful. Don't call that man that. Um, really good defender and everything, but, yeah, I mean, just definitely not worth that money. Um, there's a part of me that wishes they had just let John Mozeliak have him um, or that he had accepted the more money that the Cardinals were willing to pay him than, uh, than the Cubs were. Because that's the thing that's funny about all this to me is it, there's all this shit talk from uh, Cardinals fans. Like, ah, you paid the, like y'all were going to pay more. Y'all were going to pay more. You almost did. And it's only that Jason Hayward hated your front office so much that he was like, no, nah, I'm not going, <laughs> I'm not going there. I'm, I'm going to Chicago. Uh, so, I, yeah, I definitely think if they had not won the World Series, and and the crazy part about it is they win that World Series, and I don't know that you can't say. I don't know how. I'm not saying that the the, the locker room speech, the weight room, whatever speech, was worth the 184 million or whatever that they paid him, right? But you can't say that it wasn't worth it. <laughs> And that you can't say that they definitely would have won the World Series without him and without him doing that. Um, so it's kind of a, it's one of those conundrums of the question almost answers itself. Um, yeah, if they hadn't won the World Series, then he would be one of the, he would be go down as one of the worst signings of all time because 
he would probably look. Let's be honest. If if they let, let's say they don't even make it to the World Series, let's say they had lost that series because here's what here's what a lot of people forget. Um, they really kind of owned the Dodgers um, in that second series in the in the NLCS, but in the NLDS. The Giants had beaten uh, the Mets in the wild card game to get to the NLDS. And then the Cubs took game one against Johnny Cueto. And then I think they won. Oh, they won, they won game two also. Um, so seven up, seven down. Yadier Molina strikes out. They won game two at Wrigley. So they go up 2 0. Then they go to San Francisco. And Madison Bumgarner beats Jake Arrieta. Then Matt Moore is pitching his ass off, lights out for, I don't know, eight innings. And the Cubs are done. It's over. They're going back to Wrigley. And when they go back to Wrigley, guess who's waiting for him at Wrigley? Johnny Cueto again, who pitched to a one nothing game where he gave up a basket. It landed right in the basket home run to Javier Baez. Um, now, granted... Baez destroyed that ball, but the wind was blowing in hard, and so it it barely landed in the basket and almost didn't go out. But they were very close to losing that game. Okay, and then uh, Buster Posey hit hit like a bomb off of Aroldis Chapman in the, in the top of the ninth, I think, um, after Baez hit that home run, and it ended up being a double. But like he almost he almost took him yard and tied the game up. Anyway, so like that's how close that first game was. It was a one nothing Cubs win. Then uh, they win game two, pretty much going away. I think that was the game where Hendricks got hurt. He got a ball hit off of him, um, bruised his wrist or something like that. And uh, Travis Wood had to pitch really well. They win that game. They go, like I said, they go. Bumgarner beats Arietta. Matt Moore is pitching his ass off, and then out of nowhere, the Giants bullpen just completely craps the bed. And the Cubs go nuts on them in the top of the ninth. And that's it. It's over. Aroldis Chapman comes in. Three up, three down. Just guns them in the in the bottom of the ninth. It's over. The Cubs win in four. And they don't have to go back because it was Johnny Cueto waiting. Jeff Samarja was healthy. He was or was uh, was rested again. He was going to be ready. Um, you They were going to have, you know, uh, let's see who else. Oh, Madison Bumgarner was going to be available out of the pen. Like you had so many, so many huge red flags saying, do not let this thing get back to Wrigley Field. So I'm saying all that to say, if somehow they blow that series, like they were on their way to doing before that miraculous ninth inning, if somehow they blow that series and they don't go to the World Series, I don't know what the next year looks like. And then at that point, they've already mortgaged a lot of the farm on, and that's a three up, three down again. Jeez, Caleb Killian is just killing him. He's killing him. Uh, sorry, the puns just have to come. So he has thrown 31 pitches through three innings, and he has four strikeouts. Um, yeah, so they lose that one. I don't know what the next year looks like because they already gave up. Uh, Glaber Torres, Adam Warren, a couple other guys. Um, and then the next year they end up uh, giving up Dylan Cease and Eloy Jimenez for uh, Jose Quintana. I don't know if they make that deal. Probably do. May, they may even go harder with something, you know, even bigger. I, I don't know. They, I think they got Wade Davis for Jorge Soler that year in the off season. So, there's there's so many different variables that go into like them winning that world series was on a razor's edge so many times and yeah if he lo if if they don't win that world series and hayward's contract is the albatross that it has been for the entire 8 years of its existence um which we're we're not done with it yet we have one more, one more year left but uh, it's it's pretty ugly and then, and then it starts to really kind of weigh on, like the overall, um, the, the vibe of the uh, the franchise again, you know, because then you're back in that 
108 years, 110, 11, 12. What would we be at right here? 114 years? If they hadn't won that one, <laughs> it'd be, we'd be in the 114th year of we ain't winning the World Series. Um, and seven of those would be with him with that massive contract and not performing anywhere close to being worth that. Yeah, it would be... The, it wouldn't be just fan criticism. He would be getting booed when he ran out to right field loudly every game, especially this year when the Cubs are not playing well. And last year too, where they, they kind of folded the tent uh, halfway through the season. Um, Yeah, that's, I, I definitely, I definitely agree with that, but Caleb Killian. <clears throat> so what, what you do on the flip side of that is when you see, and I, this is why I respect what they have done so much. Um, the the Cubs front office um, with with Jed Hoyer taking the reins when uh, Theo Epstein left is they have recognized that you know going into last year, look we're going to try we're going to try to make a run and if we're right there, yeah we're going to do our best to give it one last go with this core group of guys, but we're going to be smart about it. Right. Well, they throw that combined team no hitter in Los Angeles, beat the Dodgers. Craig Kimbrell shuts it down, closes the door to to get the no hitter. And after that, they lose, I think, 14 in a row or 13 out of 14 or something insane. And it's over at that point. It's they're done. There's they're nowhere close to they were in first place. They ended up they were like five, six, seven games out of first place by the end of that that horrible losing streak. Okay. And <clears throat> when that happened, knowing what it's like to live through all those years of just trying to make this year be the year, trying to make this year be the year and never really building the blocks for let's not try to make this year be the year. Let's try to make the next 10 years be really strong. Um, because I think what was happening was the 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 albatross of not having won a title in so long was weighing on whoever was involved, manager, general manager, everyone in the front office, the ownership even, that this is, we've got to get it done right now. We've got to win. And what they did was they just kept, it was like they were, they would, they would cut off a limb and try to trade it for something to make their other limb stronger. And then when that didn't work, they cut that limb off and trade it for something to make the other two limbs that are left stronger. And then, the, you know, it just, like they kept taking one step forward and two or three steps back. And um, the roster construction was, was always suspect. And the, uh, the, the, the attractiveness of names and, numbers was really gross um, because they were chasing the wrong numbers. They were, they were basically having the conversation that Billy Bean was having in Moneyball <laughs> with his scouts. Um, they're, they're like, no, no, no. We got, cause I remember when we got, uh, uh, who was the, who was the guy? Oh, he was a big left-handed hitter, power hitter. God, I can't remember his name. Hell, he might have even played for the brute. No, no, I think he played for the Expos. Anyway, I can't remember his name. Big left-handed power hitter. Um, and I was excited. I was a kid, you know. I was excited about it, but uh, but he was he was not not the answer. And then they went and they paid all that money to Derek Lee, and he had he had that one MVP year, and he had some good years, but they way overpaid for him. They've overpaid for so many people. They went and did the No More Garcia Para trade. They've done so many of these different, you know, big moves. Alfonso Soriano is another one. Um, it ends up biting them in the ass and then they end up paying for it for years. And then, and then they're scrambling to try to make it back and they make stupid moves to, to gamble and swing for the fences there. And it just makes the problem worse, dig themselves a deeper hole. So I'm actually excited to see that they took, they, they saw the writing on the wall and they said, okay. And I was excited when they, when they lost all those games, I was like, thank God. Now they're not going to try to win this year. They're just going to try to build the farm. And sure enough, 
you get rid of Rizzo, you get Kevin Alcantara and uh, Alexander Vizcaino. You get uh, Nick Madrigal for um, Craig Kimbrell uh, with Cody Heyer as well coming over with Madrigal in that trade. I um, hope he comes back healthy next year um, after his Tommy John surgery this year. They send Javier Baez and Trevor Williams to the Mets. They get uh, Pete Crow Armstrong. Um, they sent uh, they got Anderson Espinosa from the Padres for Jake Marisnik. Um, did that hit him? Did that hit him or was that a, a, a hit the knob of the bat? Okay. Let's see. They sent uh, Andrew Chafin to the A's for Greg Dykeman and uh, Daniel Palencia. And Palencia is starting to make his way up. But then this trade to the, uh, I almost said the 49ers, to the Giants, sending Chris Bryant over there. They get Alexander Canario. And now the man that you're seeing pitch tonight, Caleb Killian. And it's really starting to, to, to round into form and shape up to be a very, um, very promising future for the Cubs. And the biggest part is, like I was saying, they spent so long failing to find, to acquire, and to develop arms. And we're doing so much of that at the major league level, either through free agency or through trades um reclamation projects or you know big signings like like they did with Marcus Stroman here or you Darvish John Lester when you go back even before that and it was um they were always trading for an arm at the deadline or they were they would they would go after some free agent arms but they weren't doing a good enough job of cultivating the farm system in the arm department and now they they are they're doing a really good job of it and you're starting to see some of those guys Rowan Wick pitched really well to close the game out earlier today. Um, and you saw, uh, you've seen what you've gotten from Keegan Thompson and Justin Steele. Like it, it's, it's starting to become like a reliable pipeline. And that's really exciting for me. So. <laughs> They're talking about the 57 home runs they hit the Major League Baseball hit yesterday, and that they changed they changed the balls. <laughs> they say they changed the balls. Yeah, they say that he used the, the good ones yesterday. <clears throat> That's funny. All right, let's go with this. And I will stay off of that. Yeah, Caleb Killian is just killing it. Woo! Man, Willie almost Willie almost hit another double down the line <laughs> just now. He he came close. <clears throat> two two count, bottom of the third, one out, and a man on first. Wilson Contreras at the plate. Um. It's uh, Plante is up to 39 pitches now with one out in the third. So he's uh, he's thrown 14 pitches already this inning. I don't think Killian has thrown 14 pitches in any inning. Just don't hit a ground ball to the shortstop, Willie. Oh. Buzz the tower, eh? Hey? Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I I vibe with that too. I'm sending Morel here. He's he's too fast. He's he's too good of a base runner. I let him loose here because this is either going to be a walk or it he's going to put it in play, or it's a strikeout. And this you you can stay out of the double play this way. You're uh, you're not going to get. I strike him out, throw him out. So, oh, little dribbler. Hey, everybody's safe. Why did you throw that? That was stupid. Like I, you gotta, you gotta know what's going on, bro. Like he's lucky he didn't throw it away. But like that could have been like he could have, he could have thrown that in 
down the right field line and giving up a run because Contreras was like at the bag when he threw the ball. By the time, all right, so he throws this ball. By the time it gets to the base, Wilson Contreras is out of the screen. You can't even see him anymore. That's how far past the back he was. That's just not smart. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, they're talking about that too on the broadcast. They, they should have been telling him to eat it. Ian Hap, let's go. First and second, Wilson Contreras at first, and uh, Chris Morrell at uh, second. 0-1 count to Hap with one out with Andre Pallante pitching for the Cardinals. I just realized I wasn't doing a very good job of giving. I can't really give play-by-play, but I can give like a little, here's what's going on, and then I can tell you what I see as it happens to a certain degree. So the dribbler to first, Goldschmidt fields it and uh, gets Ian Hap. But it's successful at least in getting the runners to advance to second and third now. So second and third with two outs. And uh, Frank Schwindel and Patrick Wisdom do up next. So you either got to pitch to Schwindel and let Frank the Tank do his damage to you and possibly drive in these two runs or put him on and risk a granny from Patrick Wisdom. Which way are you going to go? I would be careful with Schwindel, though. Honestly, I, I would be very careful. Like if I'm if I'm in this spot, I'm I'm trusting that I can get wisdom, but I'm not trusting that I can get uh, the tank. <laughs> Bro, Schwindel is just like. Somebody said, I saw somebody say earlier today, they said uh, somebody needs to take that middle seat that he took to fly to San Diego to save his career. They need to put that seat in the in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh, shoot. Because he was like, he was going to be out of baseball. It's crazy. Um, and then Patrick Wisdom, I mean, hey, shout out to the Cardinals for uh, letting him go. Let's go three and zero. So they're doing what I what I said. I, I kind of predicted the 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 wise move was to pitch around Frank Schwindel, take your chances with wisdom, but it's a big it's a big chance you're taking because he gets a hold of one is five zero. All right. Grooves a fastball in there at 97. Three and one. I don't know. I, I think I might have let Frank swing away right there. I kind of kind of wish he had, honestly. Three one. Is that gonna drop? No. It's gonna hang just long enough. So two men left on. See, I, he had a good pitch to hit that first that first fastball. The three zero fastball was the pitch. That was the pitch to drive. That one got in on his hands. He kind of fisted it out to right field. But ah well. I'm kind of tired of this electric vehicle commercial. It's not that funny. What is this? <laughs> That's funny. My daughter just sent me. They have a frozen Jack and Coke stand at the uh, at the movie theater that they went to. 
That's pretty funny. <clears throat> After my own heart. All right. So it's uh, we're going to the top of the fourth with the Cubs leading one nothing, and uh, Caleb Killian just dealing, about to make his second trip through the order. So let's see how that goes. Yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely see that coming. I mean, I mean that's what I've been talking about with this, uh, with this deal with making these trades at the deadline and everything. Um, it's, it's going to be tough. That he's going to be a tough one to see go. I mean, honestly, there, it's, it's tough to see them all go. Like that, that 2014, 15, 16 stretch was pretty epic. Even, even like 14 when they weren't good. But you could see it's kind of like this year, or like you could see Christopher Morell, like reminds me a lot of Javi. Um, you've got some uh some other pieces. You've got like like Hap is kind of like the Rizzo of this group at this point almost. Um but I think he's more he's more like the uh I think Schwindel uh or Wisdom is probably more that guy, where it's like the the guy who somebody else didn't really want. Because that's where Rizzo was. I mean, San Diego was not really feeling it, and uh, and they let him go for very, very little. Uh, back in what was that eleven or twelve? That's a foul ball. Okay, good. Um, but yeah, so I, I look at it kind of like that. But yeah, I'm I'm with you. I mean, it's it's tough. It's tough to see any of these guys go. It was tough to see Jake Arrieta go. When, like when he pitched his last game was the game that extended the series against the Dodgers in 2017. That was his last game as a Cub was he, he got the Cubs to game five and, and made it to where they didn't get swept. <laughs> that was basically his, his role in that series. Um, That was right after winning the world series. And he was the, to me, Jake Arrieta was the reason they won that World Series because if he doesn't win game two in Cleveland and he doesn't go and win game six in Cleveland and he pitches ass off in both of those games, like we're not even talking about the comeback or any of that other stuff. So um, he was one of the toughest ones to watch leave because he had such – oh, there's your first base runner. As he uh, he walked Edmund to lead off. What, what was that? How many pitches? I didn't even see what the count was before he walked him. Four is that a four pitch walk? Eesh. That's not good. Yeah, let's see. Let me see if that was in fact the case. Yeah, three and oh. Yeah, he walked him on four pitches. That's not good. So now here's your boy Gorman. So I I'm really hoping he doesn't take him deep now because uh, it'd give you guys the lead. I don't want that to happen. Um, but yeah, so watching Wilson Contreras play most likely the last two months as a Cub, um, it's going to be tough. No doubt. No doubt at all. I love Willie. <clears throat> and there's nothing I would hate to see more than to see him in a Cardinals uniform. So I'm really hoping that that's not uh, the direction that this ends up going, as you suggested months ago, um, <laughs> that would be terrible. Um, as a Saints fan, I've seen that happen too many times, where like the Saints let somebody go and they end up playing for the Falcons or the 49ers. Morton Anderson was a perfect example. Morton Anderson was one of the best, if not the best, kicker in the league for a decade with the Saints, and then they let him go and he goes and he just continues to dominate for the Falcons and ends up killing us with the leg that used to feed us. So it was pretty terrible. Definitely don't want to see that pop up by Gorman. So he does not hit that home run this time. And I still have to stay on the air, but, uh, Here we go. It's uh, it's time to get into the meat of the order again. Here's Goldie. 
one out runner on first Tommy Edmond and Goldschmidt at the plate. And that was a non-competitive curveball that just swept away about two feet outside the zone. That's a good pitch. 92. Maybe a little sink. I don't know. <clears throat> Caleb Killian pitching in the fourth of his major league debut. One and one count. One out to Paul Goldschmidt. And he keeps throwing over to check Edmund. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. I did something really dumb today. I, I was doing some stuff around my pool and got chlorine tablets. And apparently the bucket had cracked. And so I opened it up and some water had gotten in there. If you don't know, like chlorine tablets, chlorine's an oxidizer. So there's the first hit. So I can go now. But uh, Goldschmidt, Goldschmidt gets the hit. He didn't, he didn't extend his streak, but he got a hit just now. Um, anyway, it makes like, chlorine gas and uh, or chlorine dioxide gas and so anyway i open up the the lid and anyway it uh choked me out and i'm still dealing with it uh i got a little bit of phlegm and stuff like that <clears throat> but yeah that was fun but yeah so let's uh let's get out of this inning caleb killian first and second with one out here in the fourth and uh we're gonna get get out of this inning real quick get a double play ball from a nolan arenado and then uh call it a night and i'll catch you guys on the flip side but for now we are still in the air i figured i would stick it out for the the resolution of this inning since the cardinals did in fact get a hit breaking up the no hitter Come on, you got to make competitive pitches. Come on, Caleb, you got this. Hey, that's a swing. Uh, come on, Blue. <clears throat> yeah congratulations cardinals you went and bought the two of the best hitters in baseball okay hey strike where was that Some chicanery from behind the plate right now. This ump is uh, not on it. And he just walked. The base is loaded. So the second trip through the order is uh, proven a little more difficult. Tommy Hadovy going out to the mound. Yeah, you, he's 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 trying to do too much here. He was really, really composed, really under control. All he needs to do right now is get a ground ball. Keep the ball down, make them hit your pitch. Trust your stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think this if just watching him, like this is nerves. Um, his stuff is still there and everything. He's just, um, from what I'm seeing, he's just, he's like overthrowing. Um, it's in his head. I think he's trying to, or maybe not overthrowing, but he's trying to be too careful. Like he's trying to make sure like, well, if I miss, I'm going to miss off the plate. It's like, yeah, you are, you, you did, you missed 
a foot off the plate. There's a pitch right there. Trust your stuff in the zone. <clears throat> so after throwing 31 pitches through three innings, he's thrown 16 so far. That's a strike. There you go. 95 at the knees on the inside corner. That's what I'm talking about right there. Let's go. <clears throat> So here we go. Get this double play ball real quick. Oh, come on, Willie. Uh, Contreras doesn't block that ball and gets all the way to the screen. Oh, that wasn't Contreras. My bad. That's Higgins. Contreras is uh, Contreras is DH and so that was Higgins. Yeah, I think Willie does pick that actually. Mm. One and two count, one out, tie game. 96, <clears throat> top of the zone. He fouled it off, fouled it back. Well, fouled it off to the, he was behind on it, fouled it off to the left side, left-handed hitter, so. Right side is the pull side. <clears throat> I just wish Hadavi would have gone and talked to him before he walked Nolan Arenado because this has been a much better at bat command wise. So whatever he told him, it it it, it was the right recipe for him to pitch better. He just waited in that bat too long. Like once once Goldschmidt hit that rocket, he uh, when he threw those first couple of pitches that were way off, I would have gone and talked to him. Oh shit! There's a rope, and here we go. So both runs are going to score. And it's three one. Yeah, so he's. That was a that was a decent pitch, but that was uh, he just he just stayed back. Mm. Didn't try to do too much with it because he could have that that could have been one that he rolls over the top of. But that was Higgins was asking for it inside, and it leaked out over the outer part of the plate. Let him get the barrel to it. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think we have uh, we have done enough damage to ourselves, so we're going to call it a night. I said I would stay until the Cardinals got a hit. They've got two now, so uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to unjinx this game and this. Caleb Killian debut, and I'm going to end this broadcast right now <laughs> because uh, I want this, uh, I want the bleeding to stop. And I feel like that might be the only way is to uh, wrap the tourniquet that is hitting the end broadcast button around it. So there's a ground ball. Oh, there we go. Sit down, punk. All right, we're going to hang around for a minute. That was a great play. Anderson Simmons. Harrison Bader hit a ground ball right to him, and Brendan Donovan tried to try to beat him. Uh, it's it's probably the best defensive shortstop in baseball, and uh, that's just nah. You, you're not you're not beating that. You're not beating his hands and that throw. He was out by two feet. 
Let's go. All right. Get out of this now. Trust your trust your stuff. Get another ground ball. Go sit down. Let your team pick you up. Be all right. I, I lied. I'm going to stick around for a second. Since I didn't jinx it by being on here, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to stick with it. Trust that he can get Yachty here. <laughs> now, if Yachty goes deep, and then I'm I'm just going to end the broadcast in mid sentence, probably. Uh, shoot. <clears throat> Of course, the way Yachty's been hitting the ball this year, it's not likely. But it is Yachty in Wrigley, so who the hell knows? It's, uh, it's been a nightmare. Real pain in the ass. All right, let's go, Caleb. That's a good pitch. 0 and 1. Mm. Yeah. It's not a bad pitch. I, I like that miss a lot better than those misses because the misses that he had against uh, Goldschmidt, Arenado, and, and Edmund even were like way off the plate. Like not even like as soon as you see it come out of his hand, you're just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna step out of the box now because this this thing is not gonna be a strike. So better to see this the the little fine misses where he's missing by a couple of inches off the plate, but. uh Get this ground ball. Ooh, pulled the string on him. And then I got LSU down 3-2 up on this other screen. So overall, it's not a not an excellent um I don't know, fourth inning is uh, has been not so fun here. So two and two to Yachty. And Caleb Killian is approaching 30 pitches in this inning after throwing 31 through the first three. Damn. Ground ball foul. Still two and two. The thing is, Andre Palante didn't pitch very well in that first inning and got really lucky to get out of it with as little damage as was done. <clears throat> what was the, uh, let's see. Let's go back to the first. Oh, I thought he got him. He's had a single, double, and then a rocket. Oh, a single, double, walk, then a rocket by Schwindel that got caught in left. You're out. He's out. He's out. Yeah, yeah. And then Wisdom hit the grounded into a double play. <clears throat> yeah, he looks out. Yeah, it's t it's close. Um, if he if he kept it on him, 
if he got it on him early enough or if he kept it on him because he, his foot comes off the bag and his his other leg's not there yet so <laughs> see no it wasn't gary bennett it was uh ah oh, shit what's his name let's go all right nice job pj uh shoot, what was his uh mark barrett that's who it was not gary bennett it was mark barrett um uh, the catcher for the cubs who just jacked him in the jaw that was awesome I love that. That was one of my favorite moments of baseball history. Um, I, I think it's like, I hate the Cardinals. Then next is the White Sox, but I don't know. Like I'm, I'm to the point where I'm almost the y'all are, y'all are good fans. Like I, in a way, like the hatred for the Cardinals is more of like the nail hating the hammer. Like y'all have been so good for so long. It's really just annoying. And it, it's like, probably like all right enough um so there's that there, there are a few little things with some beefs and stuff like that over the years white Sox fans are just assholes and jackasses like it's been funny to watch like they through the whole era of the cubs like having their run of like contending from 2015 through 2020 essentially um that five six year stretch the white Sox fans you would have sworn that the Cubs were terrible and that the White Sox were amazing that entire time. And then the White Sox had like one little blip last year where they didn't suck and they go to the playoffs and you would have sworn that they, that they won the world series <laughs> and they talk shit relentlessly and they're constantly trolling and uh, I'm just not having it. And, uh, and then this year they're back to sucking again. Um, so I don't know. I mean, they're around 500, so they may they may end up being uh, being okay when it's all said and done. But let's see where. Let me see what their exact record is, so I can talk shit about them. They are 24 and 27, so they're they're looking up at the 500 mark. That's that's what I think about White Sox fans. Uh, but that's it. That's it for tonight. I appreciate y'all coming through, and uh, especially you. Uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. I know that's not your real name, but it's the handle you go by. I don't know what else to call you. My Cardinals fan in the building. Um, have you ever been to either Old or New Comiskey? No, or whatever the hell it's called now. Some sponsor. But yeah, I would not doubt that it's probably the shittiest stadium that anyone has ever been to. I don't know. Have you ever been to the Astrodome? The Astrodome sucked. Oh, thank God they destroyed that place. Um, that place was terrible. Um, Minute Maid slash Enron is not that bad, but uh, but yeah, the Astrodome was terrible, and uh, I can imagine Old Comiskey was terrible. I can imagine that New Comiskey is terrible, and what is it now, Safeco or whatever the hell it's called? I don't know what their field is, but yeah, I can imagine it's terrible. All right, so I'm going to leave y'all. Cardinals up 3-1. We're into the bottom of the fourth now. Patrick Wisdom coming up against Andre Pallante. Um, hitting the 50 pitch mark here just to start off the uh, fourth inning. And uh, we're going to hope that the Cubs can pull out a victory. We'll see you all next time. We're going to be around. Hang around. Subscribe. Uh, like and share this. Uh, I forgot to put the uh, put the thing up, but here you go. There it is. Subscribe and share now. Check out the our past episodes as well. But uh, we'd love to have you come around. We'll be here. Um, every chance we get to uh, to root the Cubs on to victory and to to talk about the present, the past, and the future of Cubs baseball because that's what we do here on Wrigley Field South. I, I did it again. Not Wrigley Field South, Wrigleyville South. Uh, I just get ahead of myself um, as Palante walks Patrick Wisdom. And now, talking about that throwback to the past, we're going to leave you with some nostalgia. Y'all enjoy this as we run it out. Peace. Go Cubs, go.